Welcome to this special episode of the Imperial Chronicle, which doesn't feature any L5R content whatsoever. So we won't be offended if you stop watching now. Instead, this is a practical video of how to turn this flat pack here into this fully functional core box gaming insert. Because maybe you purchased one after looking at our overview video, or maybe you won one in our Christmas competition. Either way, here are some friendly instructions walking you through how to put it together. And thanks to our friends at the Arkham Chronicle for providing the original footage. We hope you can put up with the crazy narration. The package contains three full-size sheets of MDF, one tiny size, and a single page of instructions. In addition to this, you will need some glue and possibly some masking tape. But make sure you have an ample supply of this stuff around to wipe away any excess and mop up any spills. At some point during your assembly, you're going to wonder what these two little items here, because they aren't referenced in the instructions, and nobody likes having pieces left over. Well, these are little spreaders or stirrers to help you manage your glue, so you don't have to use your fingers or paper towel. And this is another sign of a quality kit. It appears that Go7 do think of everything. Put part A and B together. So you'll need this long part here, and this smaller part here, which has got one flat edge and then lugs in three sides. Just punch them out, very easily like this, very high quality cutting. If you do have more parts pop back, you can easily just slide them back in. That way, if you are a novice to this kind of thing, you don't get mixed up with all your bits flying everywhere. Some of the parts have little tiny grooves that you need to punch out. Just flip it over, make sure that the cut appears on both sides, and then you can just pop it out with your finger, like so. And then follow your instructions, put the lug into the groove, and look how well fitted that is. Because it's cut by laser, you can get some extremely small tolerances, which means everything should fit together very nicely. We also recommend dry fitting first of all. That means just putting the pieces together without using any glue, just to make sure that they do fit. And you haven't selected the wrong part by mistake and are trying to jam it somewhere it doesn't want to go. The next parts you need are the sides of the token tray, which are labelled part C. There's two of them, one here and one here. Pop out the holes on both of these. Remember the checking that the laser has cut all the way through and then attach them to the sides like so. And notice how everything is still hanging together under its own pressure. Next you'll be wanting the two ends of the token tray. That's two of part D which are these two bits here. And you put one on each end. Fantastic. That's your token tray assembled. If you want some dividers which fit here, those are part Z and are the T-shaped pieces. You've got one on each of the larger pieces and you've got four on the little tiny strip here. Punch out as many as you need and just slot those into the top like that. Maybe don't glue those so you can remove them, but you can configure it how you like. This is what the token tray looks like with all the dividers put in. Next we're going to move on to the main box. So you'll need the base, which is this large part here, and the two inner walls which are labelled F, which are those ones there. If you were too eager and you have popped all your components out and you can't tell your F from your H, your F's, which are internal walls, are slightly shorter than your H, which is here, which is your external walls. If you have a part like this, which has a lot of intricate cuts, it's often easier to break the part away from the side of the housing and then gently pull it apart separately like this. Much easier way of doing things. You need to punch out the long holes in your base, again checking that the laser has made it through to the other side. Don't punch out any of the small cutouts however. Both pieces are identical and you're just going to pop the lug into the groove like so. And again do that gentle even pressure all the way along and as you can see it's so strong that it stands up nicely. Okay so what happens if you get a part which doesn't want to go all the way in. But first thing to do is to remove it, gently pull it out, then try flipping it round and trying it in the other way. If that doesn't work, just ease it out and if it's a pair of parts or a multiple part, try it in a different set of slots. As you can see that fits nicely and the one we pulled out, let's try and pop that in there. Remember, lovely even pressure all the way across. As you can see we're now halfway through the instructions so pop out the two parts remaining on sprue number two which is part G which will be two of the sides. Open up the two long holes in each one. 
just push it through like so. These will attach to the base and the internal walls. These end walls can be kind of tricky, but the secret is gentle, even pressure. And once you've got one in place, the other one is just as simple. All that remains is your two side walls, which are labeled as part H, which are the two parts which look very similar to this one here, but they are slightly taller. And by this point, you should be a self-assembly ninja, so just guide them nice and gently, nice and firmly into place. Then flip it over and do it again for the other side. It doesn't matter which way up you want to put these things, so if one way fits easier than another, go with that. Voila! One finished dry assembled gaming insert. Take your token tray, and that fits in sideways, in the central groove, like that. Nice and secure, it won't rattle around. The next part is your pack of dividers, which contain 15 acrylic dividers, but they do have a paper backing attached to them to protect them during transit and stop them getting scratched. Give it a tug like so, and as you can see, they are completely clear. One thing to note about the dividers is that they are taller on one edge than they are at the other, and your taller edge is your outside edge. You can slot these in literally anywhere up and down the row. And when they're in place, they add even more strength and rigidity to the structure. But there's no reason why you need to remove the paper backing, although you might want to peel the paper backing away from the edges so that they do fit very easily. And you can still keep your paper surface to write on. The mark of a good kit is does it hold together without any glue? And this one certainly does. If you keep it in the box and use the dividers, this becomes very rigid indeed. So you can get away without gluing it. But if you are stuffing it full of cards and then chucking it in the trunk of your car, then the components will push apart. Go7 recommend using Sobo Craft Glue, which you can find on Amazon and eBay. This is an eight ounce or 240 milliliter bottle, but it's available in two, four, eight, and 16 ounces. So you only need to purchase as much as you need and order at the same time your audio insert, that way you aren't hanging around. But anything labeled wood glue or PVA will do, and it's dirt cheap. It's generally white when it comes out of the bottle and will dry clear. Wood glue bottles also have a handy nozzle for easy application. PVA stands for polyvinyl acetate, which is basically car tires dissolved in nail varnish remover. But you don't need to know the science, except for at the molecular level, the glue permeates the wood fibers, making a bond which is stronger than just the wood alone. When you're selecting a PVA glue, read the back, try and find something which is described as a tacky glue. That means it will hold itself together and you won't need to use something like masking tape or clamps to keep the pieces in position. A simple trick to gluing is to put the glue where the wood meets the wood and not where it goes through the holes. So in this piece here, you'd apply glue to this part and this part, but not to the lug. So that way when it goes together, the glue is against the two bits of wood but you're not pushing glue through the hole and gluing the whole thing to your table. And when you've pushed it together, wipe off any excess glue which comes out. So there isn't any residue that's gonna block your cards fitting in smoothly. With a square box like this, you might wanna wrap some masking tape around it while the glue sets, and you'll need to leave it overnight for it to properly cure and harden. You put some newspaper or a plastic garbage bag down on your work surface to stop you gluing it to the table. Don't glue in your dividers unless you really want to, and don't accidentally glue your lid on. The next thing we're going to look at is the S card kit and is a small card divider unit. It comes on three identical boards and this time has even less instructions. If you remember those holes that we didn't punch out, this is what they're for. First you're going to need parts A and parts B. Punch out the hole in B like so. Put A and B together like this so that just slides into the hole so that your protrusion here is closest to the divider. Then that's going to sit on your base and that's going to go into your wall. Pop it in. Ta-da! And if you want even more division, punch out part C here. That's going to slot into part A all the way in, making another divider like that. And this makes four compartments which does a great job of storing your mini cards for honoured and dishonoured. Still holds in place without any glue but the end piece will wiggle like that because it's only got one connection to it. So if you are using this, you might want to glue this, even if you don't want to glue the rest of it. And the kit comes with enough to make three sets of these double dividers. Now if you choose not to put in the middle section and configure it as two instead of four spaces, then you can drop in all your rings and retrieve them with ease. So you don't have to turn your box upside down.